بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله we ask you we ask you to give us توفيق يا أرحم الراحمين and to make all our efforts just sincere for your sake ya arham rahimin whatever we do is just for you ya allah so you are pleased with us bismillah arrahman arrahim wa salatu wa salam alayka ya sayyidi ya rasulullah last time we stopped at uh, ayah 11 in uh, surah abasa and we talked uh, about the beginning of the surah where uh, sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, engaged with uh, uh, some of the leaders of Quraysh trying to get them to get into Islam and the most uh, the uh, main one was Ubay bin Khalaf so uh, he uh, he tried he was trying to convince them of getting into Islam um, but they were neglecting and they were unresponsive they didn't want to do it and uh, Ibn Umm Maktoum a blind uh, man, a sincere Muslim, came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he and he asked him to uh, 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 for some uh, advice about uh, Islam, and to he asked him for some questions just to increase his iman. So he, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, turned his face and he frowned. So Allah subhanahu wa taala told us about. Uh, those people, the uh, non-believers, don't worry. Oh, Muhammad, don't worry. Do not, uh, do not get yourself into too much trouble. Perhaps you would kill yourself through grief over people because they don't believe in this message. So don't get overwhelmed if they don't believe. But out of his mercy to to uh, uh, all people, he wants everyone to believe and to be a good, a good Muslim. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves on after the first part and he talked about Kalla, innaha tadhkira. Indeed, it's a reminder. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is telling us that Remembering him is something that comes by instinct. So, Ya Muhammad, your way is to remind people of their uh, uh, good instinct. This is your, uh, the way that you have to, to, uh, be guide, to guide people to. The instinct. Al fitratul bashariya salima. So Allah reminds his servants, his servants, through his books, through the Quran. So it's a tazkira, it's a reminder from two things. The first one is ghafla, headlessness, and the second one is the taqlidul aba wal bi'a which means uh, imitating the forefathers and imitating the society. If people are good, then they will be good. If people are bad, then they will be bad. But no, he, the reminder should be to the origin that everything is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to remember this. When we read the Quran, when we read Allah's ayahs, then we will be reminded of this. فَمَنْ شَاءَ ذكره. So whoever wishes, whoever wants, can remember him, can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you wish, you can remember Allah in all, you, all your affairs. When you are doing anything, you just say, La ilaha illallah, you just keep remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, keep mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, if you wish, you can read the Quran and remember Allah's order and work accordingly. So there are orders and we have to follow these orders. So we have to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is overwatching us. Whoever wishes 
can remember him. How? Where? في صحف مكرمة. In honored scriptures. In records held in honor. مرفوعة مطهرة. These records are exalted. They are purified. The Quran is preserved since it was revealed. No changes happened to it. Nothing, not a single word added, not a single word deleted, not a single word edited. It's honored, it's elevated in status. It is purified from any deficiency. The Quran ayahs are all connected and related to each other. You hold the Quran and you hold the Quran also, if you want to hold it, you have to have you have to be in a in a purity status. So whoever wants to remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can remember Him through His Quran by reading the ayahs of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So what about this Quran? Bi safara kiram in barara. This Quran is in the hands of ambassadors honorable and obedient. When the angels descended down bringing the, re the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his messenger, to the messengers, then the messengers, these angels are ambassadors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These carriers are the ambassadors of Allah's word to the messenger they are noble creatures. Their deeds are, uh, are righteous. They are pure. They are perfect. And the same thing, the one who, uh, who holds the Quran should be righteous. The one who memorizes the Quran should have righteousness in his heart so that he follows the orders of the Quran. He remembers the ayahs that he has memorized. He remembers that do this and don't do that. He follows the orders. So the holders of the Quran, the ones who memorize the Quran are the best people to, uh, to uh, apply the words of Allah and to follow the orders of Allah. So the Quran is the words of Allah that would get us go back to the pure instinct. It was, it's the words of Allah and it has been preserved by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we memorize the Quran, then we have it in our hearts and when we get our children to memorize the Quran, then they have it in their hearts. So what preserves, what preserves the Quran is not, is, not only, is not only just the book itself, how the words are written, but it is where it lies in, in the heart of the, those who memorized it. The Quran was sent down from one generation to another generation to another generation. And this is how it's preserved in the hearts of the believers. Perish mankind, how ungrateful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so much bounties, so much. But what have we done? Have we uh, fulfilled our duties towards these bounties? Have we used them soundly? Have we, uh, have we followed the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He gave us the eyes. Do we, do we look at things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prevented us to, from looking at? What are we doing with these bounties that Allah has given us? We have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all the bounties that he has given us, with everything good that he has provided for us. Yes, they're given for, 
for us to be to enjoy them but still this is a test so we have to be careful so rejecting the truth after all that Allah has given is something so so great is something that's unbelievable how ungrateful man is. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains how he created man from something despised. And that he is, bringing, he is able to bring man back to life after, die, after death just as he created him initially. So if we look at the cycle, من أي شيء خلقه من نطفة خلقه فقدره. So from what substance did he create man? From what thing did Allah subhanahu wa taala create man? From من نطفة خلقه فقدره. From a sperm drop. From despicable fluid. He created him. فَقَدَّرَهُ Then he proportioned him. So, the baby would look like his father, his mother, uh, his uncle, his aunt. So, then everything is proportioned for man. Allah created man and well formed him. Well formed him. Giving him the best that would suit him. Each and every person. He decreed his lifespan. He decreed his sustenance and whether he would be miserable or happy. Then he made the, the path easy for him. He guided him to the path and tested him with commands and prohibitions. What's the result? He will be either grateful or ungrateful. So this is this will happen through all his life. He will be either obedient or disobedient. After his lifespan ends, ثم أماته فأقبره. Then took his life. He caused his death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused his death. فأقبره. And had some, someone else to bury him. Had him placed in a grave. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told people how to bury each other. And this happened in the first death that happened on earth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did for Sayyidina Habil and Qabil. So what happened, Sayyidina Qabil, Qabil actually, Qabil killed Habil. But when he killed his brother, he didn't know, he didn't know how to or what to what to do with the body. So Allah sent a bird and he um, uh, digged in the ground and put the other bird that he had killed and then put the dirt back. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told people how to bury each other. Honoring the dead with burial and not leaving him to rotten on the surface of the air or to be eaten by animals. Then when it is Allah's will, he will resurrect, resurrect him. But when will that be? Nobody knows. Yes, عَنِ السَّاعَةِ أَيَّانَ مُرْسَاهَا ثُمَّ أَنْتَ مِنْ ذِكْرَاهَا they're asking you when is the hour, but you you don't know you you have no uh, no information about it. So the the one being questioned does not have more information than the one who asked the question. So we have to get prepared. Death might come any second. ثُمَّ إِذَا شَاءَ أَنْشَرَهُ And when will that be? We said nobody will know. كَلَّا لَمَّا يَقْضِ مَا أَمَرَهُ No, indeed. 
Man has not yet fulfilled what Allah so commanded him. The obligations that were imposed upon him. The, the, the righteous person or the person who you, uses his intellect, how can, how can he disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But even us, we do mistakes, and which is fine. But when we do mistakes, we have to, to follow it with repentance immediately. We have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. We have to promise ourselves. We have to, to, to feel sorry that we did that sin. And we have to promise ourselves not to do it again. So now... Allah now is going to give example to man just to make him aware of things. So Allah is talking about the, circ the cycle that proves life after death. This is the main issue that non-believers could not understand. How can there be life after death? After our bones decay, how can we live again? How, how can be resurrected after we die? They could not believe. So Let's see what, what, uh, what eyes do we have here. So the growth of a seed and other things is a proof of life after death. How? فَلْيَنظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ Then let man look at his food. Just check the food you are eating. This is a call to reflect upon Allah's favor. What has Allah, what's this cycle? What has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala done? Anna sababna al asabba. How we pour down water in abundance. Where does water come from? Where does this rain come from? It, it comes from the, uh, the uh, water that, uh, that evaporates from the sea, from the uh, lakes, from uh, the oceans, and they they uh, uh, form in, into clouds in the skies. These clouds would rain, would pour down abundantly. So we sent water from the sky down to the earth. Then we cleft the earth apart. We cleft the earth asunder. We cause the water to settle in the earth and mingles with the seeds that are left in the earth. So if you look at how the grains sprout, you feel the power, the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, if you take just the grain that has just sprouted, you feel that the earth around it, the dirt around it is put apart so that the sprout will come up. So this grain grew and made the earth has a hole so it can sprout and get bigger and bigger. If you take this grain, this small thingy that, that's coming out, if you take it, then you feel the how, how weak this, this uh, new sprout is. SubhanAllah. But even though it was able by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get the earth to be a, a bit apart from it, 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 uh, itself, so it can grow and get up on the surface of the earth. Now, what happens? From these seeds grow grains and grape vines and also just the moist herbal plants uh, the uh, tender ones that animals graze on. So we have food for people and food for animals. 
فأنبتنا فيها حبا وعنبا وقضبا وزيتونا ونخلا and also we had all different types of olives all different types of oil olive oil and we have nakhla date palms date palms range from unripe to ripe to dry so all different types of dates wahadaiqa ghulba also dense huge gardens forests containing huge trees these trees we use them uh, we we get fruits from them or we use the their wood to build houses so everything has been uh, uh, created to help us living on this earth fruits and pasture meadows animal food so why we have all of this? It's provision and benefit for you and your cattle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us everything to facilitate our life. Either man will be thankful after this or he will be ungrateful. But there will be a day when reckoning will happen. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَةِ Then when these, when there comes a sakha, what's a sakha? There are different uh, interpretations for the word sakha. The first one is, it's another, another name of the Day of Judgment, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned his servants of. So this is a sakha, the Day of Judgment. It's the name also of the blowing in the trumpet, it's called a sakha. And also it can be interpreted as the thunderous shout of the day of judgment that would deafen the ears. So when there comes the sakha, what happens? يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ That day, a man shall, free, shall, uh, shall flee from his brother, from his mother, and from his father. He wants to free himself. He, he shall flee from his wife and his children. He will see them and flee away from them because of her at that day. So what will happen? What is the reason that he will flee from them? There are several, several reasons. The first one is that on the day of judgment, everyone will be concerned about himself and himself only. Even, even prophets, they will, each one will, uh, they will be asked to, to mediate, to arbitrate for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on behalf of the, of the creatures. Everyone will say, myself, myself. I will not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything, anything except for my, myself. Except, of course, of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the the first reason that everyone is concerned about himself. The second reason is that a, a person might flee from his uh, brother, sister, mother, or father, uh, wife, and children because he could not, he, during life, he did not fulfill their rights over him. He wants to flee away, trying to get away. So he doesn't remember them. He doesn't remember that he, he did not fulfill his duty towards them. So this is another interpretation. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next ayah, لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ شَأْنُ يُغْنِي لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ for every man on that day will be a matter 
adequate for him. Everyone cares about how he can ran ransom himself from punishment, so much so that he has no care for anyone. Everyone will be preoccupied in his business that distracts him, distracted from the affairs of others. Nobody would care about anybody else. Sayyidah uh, Aisha radiallahu anha uh, was talking to Sayyidah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa about the day of judgment and he said to her, تُحْشَرُونَ حُفَاتًا عُرَاتٍ قَالَتْ أَوَّ يَنْظُرُ بَعْضُنَا إِلَى بَعْضٍ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ So will you, you will be uh, resurrected naked and barefoot. So she asked him, will, will we see each other nakedness? Sayyidah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered, no, everyone will be too busy to look at others. Everyone will have enough worries to make him careless of others. So it's the day of judgment. Everyone is resurrected, reckoning started. What's the result? The result now, we have two groups, winners and losers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now will talk about the two groups, will talk about the faces, faces of the people of paradise and the faces of the people of fire. وَجُوهٌ يَوْمَئِذَيْنْ مُسْفِرَةٌ ضَاحِكَةٌ مُسْتَبْشِرَةٌ On that day, some faces will be reflecting light. They will be bright, laughing, rejoicing. At the good news, they will be celebrating, showing extreme joy that they are the people of paradise. They are the people who obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dunya. So they are the people who are highly rewarded. They are rewarded immensely. So this is the first group. This is the faces of the first group. What about the others? وَوُجُوهٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَلَيْهَا غَبَرَةٌ تَرْهَقُهَا قَتَرَةٌ Other faces that they will be dust-stained. They will, they will be darkened. Darkness will cover them. Sadness will cover their faces. Who are those people? Who is this group? أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْكَفَرَةُ الْفَجَرُ such will be the disbelief, the disbelieving, the wicked, evil doers. Misery. They realized how severely they will be punished. Their eyes are miserable. Their faces are miserable. They had the disbelievers that they, they had disbelief in their hearts. They were evildoers in their actions. They were ungrateful to Allah's bounties. They were the ones who denied and rejected Allah's signs. They committed what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited them. They did not adhere to Allah's commands. May Allah save us. May Allah save us. May Allah make us with the winner's group. May Allah give us radiant faces on the day of judgment. Ya Rahman Rahimin. May Allah make us of the, of the people who will be rejoicing the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. So this is the uh, end of Surah Abasa. And now inshallah we will be moving to Surah Al-Takweer which will uh, show us what will happen on the day of judgment. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man sarrahu an yanzura ila yawmi al-qiyamati ka'annahu ra'ya ayn fal yaqra' idha al-shamsu kuwirat wa idha al-samaa unfatarat wa idha al-samaa unshaqat. Whoever wishes to look at the day of judgment as if he is seeing it with his own eyes then let him read when the, sun, when the sun is darkened, which is Surah Al-Takweer, Surah 81, and when the heaven is cleft asunder, this is Surah Al-Infitar, uh, Surah 82, and when the heaven is split asunder, which is Surah Al-Inshiqaq, uh, verse 84. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is going to give us a visual uh, example of what's going to happen on the day of judgment. When the sun is folded up. Kuwirat means to fold something like a ball. Kura, ball. So you, the sun will be rolled, rolled up and thrown away as a ball. So the sun is darkened and its light goes away. It's not shining anymore. إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ When the stars have fallen and scattered. So the force which keeps the, the stars in, in their orbit is loosened. They're not anymore in their orbits. So they, they disappear and their light will go away. وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ سُيِّرَتْ And when the mountains are made to pass away. So, what will happen? The mountains will not remain in their places. They will be blown and blasted. They will be completely removed. In Surah Taha, uh, Ayah 105, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْجِبَالِ فَقُلْ يَنْسِفُهَا رَبِّي نَسْفَةً when they ask you about the mountains, say, my Lord will blow them away with a blast. No sun, no stars, no mountains. And when the 10 month pregnant she camels are neglected, what is this image here? What's al -ishar? So before, before buses, before trucks, before airplanes, before cars, there was nothing more precious or more important to the Arabs than the she camel. So especially if the she camel is just about to give birth to her young. So the she camels, the pregnant she camels is called al-ishar. And normally, al aishar are very well taken care of, very well uh, cared for. So uh, she was, uh, the, the al aishar always would be so cared for and looked after so that it's not lost, it's not stolen, or it's not harmed. So time will come and people will not care for their precious things. So as we said, the Aishar are the best type of camels, particularly the pregnant female ones. So what will happen to them? They will be neglected. When they reach... Um, when they when these when these uh, uh, Aishar they they are called Aishar when they reach the tenth the tenth months of their pregnancy and it, the, this is the most precious time for the Arab to have a Aishar. So the people will be too busy to tender them or to benefit from them. It's a huge day. يوم تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها. On the day, you see every nursing mother will be distracted from that child she was nursing, and every pregnant woman will be will abort her pregnancy because of fear. This all happens because of the terrifying and the horrible situation, and what will happen? just before that day, the day of judgment. What's the other picture that we have here? وَإِذَا الْوَحُوشُ حُشِرَتْ And when the wild beasts are gathered together. In another verse, when they are uh, gathered, when these beasts unto their Lord shall be gathered. وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ سُجِّرَتْ and when the seas become as blazing fire set, 
the seas into fire. So what, what happens? The oxygen and the hydrogen, which are combined, they will be separated and they will begin to burn. So they will cause the seas to blaze, to be on fire. And when the souls are joined with their mates, so the body and the soul get back together. Every type of soul will be rejoined with its peer, with its mate. Those who are alike are joined together. And we can see, uh, so we have we have two two uh, two explanation for this ayah here and when the female infant buried alive is questioned for what sin was she killed al mauuda the word al mauuda is the female infant that the people of the pre islamic time in, of ignorance would bury in the dirt when when uh, uh, the, that that infant is born due to their hatred to, of girls, due to her to their uh, being shamed of having a girl. So on the day of judgment, the female infant will be asked, "What sin she committed that caused her to be murdered?" Or, as I said, there is the other explanation that this female infant asks why she was buried alive. So for economic hardship, because boys are uh, better than girls, boys help uh, the fathers, uh, boys are the helpers, girls are, uh, are not supposed to, uh, to be with the men. And in wars, uh, they will be, they, there will be, um, uh, a very uh, important uh, issue that the parents would be very uh, so afraid that their daughters get captured and they will be sold as slaves. So all these all these reasons are enough for them to bury the infant girl when she is uh, born. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another ayah, وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَى ظَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدًّا وَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ يَتَوَارَى مِنَ الْقَوْمِ مِنْ سُوءِ مَا بُشِّرَ بِهِ أَيُمْسِكُهُ عَلَى هُونٍ أَمْ يَدُسُّهُ فِي التُّرَابِ سَاءَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ So when they get the news that they have a baby girl, they, they would, uh, well, he will be uh, 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 يعني away from people. He will be humiliated, he will be disgraced. Or he can free himself and bury that girl. Qais bin Asim came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he told him, Oh, Messenger of Allah, uh, I buried some daughters of mine alive in the pre period uh, uh, of pre Islamic ignorance. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Free a slave for each one, uh, one of the uh, buried daughters. And I said, I am an owner of camels. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said to him, then sacrifice a camel for each one of your daughters. We move on. When the records are unfold, unfolded, so the records are passed out to people. Each person on the day of judgment will be given his record in his right hand or left hand. Qatada radiallahu anhu says, O oh son of Adam, your record is written, is written in, then rolled up and distributed to, do, to you on the day of judgment. So let each man look at what he himself dedicated to be written in his record. Be aware. Be aware of what, what you want your record to include. Good, bad. You want to be a winner, you want to be a loser. So you are the one who dictate what is to be written. And when the heaven is stripped off, is removed from its place. 
And when hell is superheated, so the fuel of hell is men and stones. Hell gets overheated because of the wrath, because of the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and because of the sins of people. So this is the other picture. Hellfire? Now we are talking about paradise. And when paradise is brought near, near those who will inhabit it, near the righteous people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with, radiyallahu anhum wa Alimat nafsumma ahbarat. At that time, each and every one will know exactly what he has brought on the day of judgment. يوم تجد كل نفس ما عملت من خير محضرا وما عملت من سوء تود لو أن بينها وبينه أمدا بعيدا. This is Ayah Ali Imran Ayah thirty. So on that on the day, every soul, every person will be confronted with all the good he has done and all the evil he has done. He will wish that there were the great distance between him and his evil deeds. This is another verse in Surah Al-Qiyamah. So on the day, man will be informed of what he sent forward and what he left behind. The blazing fire of hell will be full, in full view. Paradise, with all its blessing, will also be in full view. And everyone will know what he has done. At that time, everybody will realize the result of their actions. Nay, I swear by the stars. That will, will withdraw during the day and sweep across and, and appear. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing now with stars. With wal idha asas and by the night when it goes away or when it approaches Allah is swearing by the night and its darkness when it approaches. And by the morning and its light when it shines. When the night envelops and when the, when the day, when the light appears in brightness. By the, by the forenoon. And by the night when it darkens. So Allah is swearing. By the dawn when it breathes up. When it brightens and it rances. When it comes. So what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by? Why is he swearing? Verily, this is the word of an honorable, noble messenger of someone who, who passed the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who passed the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's swearing that Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam is honorable. The quwwatin inda dhil arshi makin. He has great power and high ranks with the owner of the throne. Muta'in thamma ameen. There he is obeyed and held as trustworthy. He is trustworthy. He passed the message exactly as is to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the heavens, he has prestige and his words is listened to. He is obeyed among, among the high gathering of angels and he is respected 
and he has been chosen for the delivery of this magnificent message. He's al-Amin. He's trustworthy, truthful, honest, honorable. He conveyed the Quran exactly as is. So this is Jibreel alayhi salam. وَمَا صَاحِبُكُمْ بِمَجْنُونَ Quraysh used to say that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is uh, 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 insane or he is a magician but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is confirming and your companion, your holy messenger, the holy messenger of Allah is not insane. وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ بِالْأُفُقِ الْمُبِينَ And indeed, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has seen Jibreel alayhi salam in the clear horizon. Sayyidina Muhammad saw him so Jibreel alayhi salam uh, in the true form that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created him in. So he saw him twice. The first time when he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see him. And the second one during the night of the journey, al-Isra' wal Mi'raj. And it said, Sayyidina, Muhammad, Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam, lahu sittu mi'ati janah, kullu janahin ma bayna samai wal ard. He has 600 wings, each wing, is the size of the distance between uh, sky and earth, heaven and earth. وَمَا هُوَ عَلَى الْغَيْبِ بِضَنِينَ Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not stingy, he's not a liar. He, is not, he did not keep anything of the knowledge that he received uh, from people. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not uh, conceal anything about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about malaika, about the stories of the anbiya, about life, about death, about resurrection, about reckoning, everything. وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَيْطَانٍ رَجِيمٍ And it's not the word of the outcast Satan. It's not, uh, he is not able to produce it. Shaitan does not, does not whisper to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the words of Allah, no. وَمَا تَنَزَّلَتْ بِهِ الشَّيَاطِينُ وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لَهُمْ وَمَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ This is in Surah Al-Shu'ara. And it's not the shayateen who brought it down. Neither would it suit them, nor they can. They, they would not be able, they are not able to do, the, to do it. فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ then where are you going? How can you deny Quran after all these signs? In huwa illa dhikrun lil alameen. Verily, this is only a reminder to all human beings, to all creatures, to all mankind. Liman sha'a minkum an yastaqeen. To each one of you who wishes to follow the right path. Although this is a reminder to all mankind, the one who will benefit from it is the one who seeks the truth, who's righteous, who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and who adheres to the Quran. But Allah ends up the surah with saying, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ And you cannot will unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides. And this is what we all ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, you make us of your guided people, Ya Allah. Wa sallillahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim.